I want to welcome everyone to His Glory Ministry as we continue our series in the book of Isaiah. Tonight we will be in Isaiah 21, and as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living Word of God, which is our Savior Christ the Lord. Okay, the prophet Isaiah here in Isaiah 21 is going to kind of move um, throughout some of the different powers in the world, but also give us a glimpse of the end time. Uh, that Jeremiah also referenced to being uh, Babylon, the, the, the literal Babylon in the end times, and also the book of Revelation. So let's get right into it. It's a short chapter, and here we go. We'll talk about the Edomites and um, how God has dealt with them. Verse 21, chap, or verse 1. The burden against the wilderness of the sea, as the wilderness in the south passed through, so it comes from the desert, from a terrible land. Some will say this is the... Uh, the, uh, the prophecy against Babylon, uh, not only the Babylon when Nebuchadnezzar was there and then his grandson when the Medes and Persians took over, uh, referencing Daniel 5 with a handwriting on the wall, um, but also the, the literal Babylon in the end times. And when we get to that part, we'll discuss, we'll discuss that. God, through his prophets, Jeremiah and Isaiah, is literally talking about at the end times that Babylon will be rebuilt. And uh, we've said many times in our, our teachings that uh, if you Google Babylon today, it is turning into a, uh, an area of commerce again. And uh, it will be, in my conjecture, where the Antichrist is housed out of. Uh, there's rumors that the United Nations may build a, uh, a, the United Nations there, because it's no secret that the United States would like to uh, get them out of the, the prime uh, location in New York City. Um, Saddam Hussein spent millions and millions of dollars of excavating the area of Babylon. Uh, he believed, uh, according to his, uh, you know, his religion, Islam, that uh, it was his duty to, uh, you know, rebuild the, the 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 end day of Babylon. And he literally found the banquet hall in, uh, that Isaac, or that uh, Daniel was talking about, with the handwriting on the wall in the United States military during the first uh, uh, Iraqi invasion uh, actually was housed there. So let's uh, let's get into verse two. A distressing vision is declared to me. A treacherous dealer deals treacherously, and the plunder plunders. Go up, Elam, besiege, O Media. All sightings I have made to cease. So Isaiah is getting a troubling vision of what things are going to happen short term, mid term, and then the end time when God comes down through His Son Jesus Christ and. We see in the book of Revelation, Babylon, 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 uh, the, the, she has fallen. Verse 3, therefore my loins are filled with pain. Pangs have to taken hold of me like the pangs of a woman in labor. I was distressed when I heard it. I was distressed when I saw it. So being, again, being a prophet, seeing these destructions is not a fun thing to do. Uh, to see the visions that are coming and also to be a, a watchman. And the watchman here is referring to Isaiah to let the people know what's going to happen. And it's not a pleasant thing. And that's why they need to humble themselves and seek the face of the Lord. And that's where we are today in our society as well. We as Christians, we need to humble ourselves and seek the Lord. Yes, there's trials and tribulations and it's uh, the world is melting down. But our home is on the high, and we have to stay strong with and uh, with our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, and trust Him, not worldly governments. Trust Him, not in mighty militaries. But the King of Kings and the Lord of Hosts will come down, as the prophets have said, as the Scripture has said, and as Jesus said in Matthew five seventeen and eighteen, He's coming back to dot the I and cross the T. My heart wavered, fearfulness frightened me. The night of which I longed, He turned into into fear for me. Verse 5, prepare the table, set a watchman in the tower. Again, watch, the watchman is always a reference to God's prophets. Uh, again, in the cities of Israel or major uh, cities, they would have big walls up and they'd have watchmen overlooking to see if the enemy was coming. Remember in the Medes and Persians, uh, they, they conquered Babylon without even firing a shot. They, 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 they blocked up the, the moat and they walked right in. And uh, so the watchmen are supposed to be watching for these things. And that's what a reference or an idiom to the prophets. Prophets are watchmen. They're on the high tower. We are, the, the, we are to show the Lord and the world what the Lord tells us to say and speak to them the truth that the world does not want to hear. That's why it's not very popular being a prophet. But it's very rewarding because it's, it's not what man thinks of you. It's what God thinks of you in your heart and doing what he wants us to do is, is the will that we need to take. Um, 
Verse 6, for thus has the Lord said to me, go set a watchman, let him declare what he sees. So he's telling Isaiah, you're the watchman. Tell everyone what you are about to see. And he saw a chariot with a pair of horsemen. Again, chariot and horsemen are always a, is a, a reference literally of chariot and horsemen at that time. But also we see uh, that as an idiom of, of strength, of military. Uh, that's why God said, do not bring in horses in the law. To, to, uh, Solomon broke that because God didn't want to rely on, you to rely on horses and chariots because that would be you relying on your own military might. He wanted you to re rely on him, the King of kings and the Lord of hosts. It is God who will conquer all things through his son, Jesus Christ, in, in the Trinity, God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, showing us the things that will happen. A chariot of donkeys, a chariot of camels, and listening earnestly with great care. Donkeys uh, were a symbol of where the kings would ride on. Remember when Jesus made a triumphal entrance uh, uh, that was prophetically talked about in Daniel 9 to the day, which was uh, Palm Sunday. Hosanna, Hosanna to the Lord. He rode in a donkey, riding in a donkey. He's claiming to be the king of Israel. He is claiming to be the, the, the Mashiach, the Messiah, Messiah the king in Hebrew. And the chariot of camels is a reference to commerce. That's what they carry all their, their goods on. And he listened earnestly with great care. Verse 8. Then he cried, A lion, my lord, I stand continually on the watchtower in the daytime, and I've sat at my post every night. The lion is a reference to Babylon. We're going to see here in 21.9, this is going to reference Jeremiah 51.8, Revelation 14.8, Isaiah 46.1, Jeremiah 50, verse 2, uh, 51, verse 44, and, um, and in 21.10 of Isaiah, it will reference Jeremiah 51.33. So these are all references to end-time Babylon being a power again. The prophet Jeremiah and Isaiah both confer what the book of Revelation says, that it will happen to Babylon. Uh, here we go. Verse 9. And look, here comes a chariot of men and a pair of horsemen. Then they answer and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And remember, that's what's going to be said in Revelation 14.8. Again, the chariot of men with a pair of horsemen are showing military might. Their, their, their militaries are, are gathering up, as we see, and in, in called Harmageddon in the, in the Valley of Megiddo. That is the, the, last, the last fire, as the last battle in, the, in the, the end times in the book of Revelation in the Valley of Megiddo. Um, he looked and comes on a chariot. Babylon has fallen, Babylon, and all the carved images of her gods he has broken to the ground. So this is a prophecy saying that God, through Jesus Christ, is going to end it once and for all. All the idols and all the false gods are coming down with the Messiah. Jesus Christ comes to the earth and says, I am, literally, I am that I am. I am sent by the Father. We are one and three. We are Elohim, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I am coming down to sit on my father David's throne and usher in the Davidic covenant and take reign over Jacob or Israel forever. Remember, that's an everlasting covenant, the Davidic covenant and the covenant of land covenant, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that God through Jesus Christ will fulfill in the millennial reign forever. He speaks the word, comes back as the title of the living word in the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ, praise his name. Oh, my threshing and the grain on my floor. Threshing is, is, is punishment. Grain on the floor. This is what I've heard from the Lord of hosts. Again, remember, Lord of hosts is a military term uh, used of uh, Jehovah or God in three. So when he called of host, that means he is coming down with a might. Remember in Revelation, he'll come down with thousands and ten thousands, as Enoch said and Jude said, uh, it, with his, on white horses to usher in the millennial reign and put away evil once and for all. Put the false prophet and the, uh, the Antichrist into the lake of fire. Satan will be put into Sheol for a, 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 about a thousand years and then he'll let loose for one season. Then it opens up the white throne judgment and all that are names have been removed from the, the book of life will be thrown in the lake of fire, including Satan. And then we enter into eternity with the most high God. The burden against Duma. So uh, back to 10. Oh, my threshing grain, which the, the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have declared to you. There is one God. He is the God of Israel. And he's also, the, in Israel again in Hebrew means God prevails. He is the God of Israel. And he is the God of every single Gentile who accepts Jesus Christ, his son, as Lord and Savior. We are grafted in and we become sons and daughters of the most high God, Elohim, forever because of his love for us. Um, verse 11 
is uh, talking about the burden against Duma. And Duma and Seir are references to Edom, the Edomites. And we'll talk about that here in a second. He calls the burden against Duma and he calls to out Seir. Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? Verse 12, the watchman says, the morning comes and also the night. If you will inquire, inquire, return, come back. So Isaiah is the watchman telling them. So in verses 11 through 17, Duma and, and Seir are um, Edom. The Hebrew word that Isaiah is using is Adam, uh, Adam, A-D-O-M, which means uh, stillness or silence. So e the Edomites were lit literally put in silence because the Babylonians took over and the Babylonians took over um, the Assyrians, as we know, uh, before the Greeks did. Uh, and then Edom was, uh, finally became uh, non-existent uh, after they took over the temple in 70 AD, which Jesus uh, prophesied. The Herods were Edomites, um, and that is one of the reasons why they were uh, uh, not liked by the Israelites, because they were considered uh, half-Jewish. So they were the Edomites of the Herods, and after 70 AD, we can see that the stillness of what Isaiah the prophet is talking about, there is no area of Edom today. The burden against Arabia. In the forest of Arabia, you will lodge, O you traveling companies of the Dedanites. So this is talking about Arabia, normal, uh, today's Saudi Arabia. O inhabitants, I have the land of Tima. Bring water to him who is thirsty. With their bread they met, they met him who fled. For they fled for the, from the swords, from the drawn sword, from the bent bow, and from the distress of war. Again, the end time being the war. We see that uh, um, Arabia in the Ezekiel War seems to be sitting out of the Ezekiel 38-39 War. So we're not sure what position that modern-day Saudi Arabia will take, but we can see that the distress of war of all nations will come to a head in the Valley of Megiddo when Christ comes back and, and, and takes the military term, term of Lord of Hosts and the Living Word and ushers in the Davidic Covenant. Verse 16, for the Lord has said to me, within a year, according to the year of a hired man, all the glory of Kedar will fail. And indeed, it did happen. And the remainder of the number of archers, the mighty men of the people of Kedar, will be diminished. For the Lord God of Israel has spoken it. And the Lord God of Israel has spoken it. He speaks to his prophets. He speaks to his saints. And it's so beautiful, as the prophets have said in the, in the first covenant, that mighty God, Elohim, does not do anything unless he tells his watchmen, his prophets, and his saints first. He wants us to be engaged. He wants us to be, have a heart for him and be obedient to him. He wants us to walk hand in hand in his glory, to fulfill his purpose, and have us trust in him with all of our heart, our soul, and mind, not to get ahead of him, not to fall behind in him, but trust him and walk hand in hand, and he will use us for his will to create our will to create a perfect will. We pray that Isaiah 21 has been a blessing to you, and may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you till next time on his glory on Isaiah 22. Thank you, and God bless.